this first activity was all about taking the AS content and expanding it a little bit more. Now, if we work through this, the first thing we need to do, of course, is write down whatever minus one five in hexadecimal is. And notice it isn't written down in any other way other than to give us a minus indicator. So we can write the one and the five down in the standard table in the standard way. This comes out to be the number 21. So what we're saying really is we need to represent minus 21 in two's complement. Now you could do your bit flipping if you want, but I don't particularly like that method. I prefer doing it this way, where we say that, right, if I want to get into a negative value, I'm going to be using the minus 128. And then what do I need to add to 128 to get it up to minus 21? Well, I need to add a 64, a 32, an 8, a 2, and a 1 to get all the way up to that value. We need to work out what C is then. Well, C is a single digit hexadecimal value, which is 12. 12 in two's complement doesn't require any minus 128s, so we just represent 12 on the second half. Adding those together is reasonably simple. 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 1, 0 or 2, so it's 1. We, we carry the most significant value there. We then got 0 plus 0 plus the carried value of 1, which is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus 0 is 1. So remembering that this representation is 2's complement, that leftmost value is the negative version of itself, so that becomes minus 128. So this is minus 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which gives us the grand total of minus 9, which if we go back to the original, minus 21 plus 12 does give us minus 9. So you can go through and work these things out in multiple ways. In this floating point activity, the result is reasonably straightforward. The first thing to do is to work out, using two's complement, how many positions the exponent is telling us to move the point. This is saying plus three, which means we move the point three spaces to the right. So let's do that, one, two, three, which means we rewrite it with a decimal point in the right place. And then we write the place values of all those symbols above it. Remember, it's still in two's complement form. So the leftmost value is the negative version of itself. And then as we go off into the fractional part, we've got half, a quarter, an eighth, and a sixteenth. So what this turns out to be is five point five, five and a half. Changing it the other way around just requires some thinking and some practice because point eight one two five is actually the result of a half, a quarter, and a sixteenth. And this is just something you get to notice by practicing these a little bit. So what we need to represent, first of all, is we need to represent in two's complement, 53.8125. If we start out by drawing out our place values, remember we need to do this for the minimum amount of places uh, we can, uh, we're gonna start with a minus 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, and then all the way to uh, 1 16th, because we need all these values to represent the number 53.8125. And then we do that. We can turn on the half, the quarter, and the 16th, and then 53 is composed of 32, 16, 4, and 1. And of course, no minus 16s in there at all. We then need to normalize it. So what we need to do is need to move that decimal point so that it is one place from the left-hand side. And in this case, we're moving it six places to the left. Now that gives us a positive exponent. So first job is to rewrite the mantissa now in 12 bits. We start with the leftmost point and we copy all the values down. Any remaining values are just filled with the zero. The exponent then we need to represent plus six. It's told us there's a four bit exponent. So we need to use that with two's complementation to represent the number six. And that's done in that way. And there's our answer of to how we represent that in floating point form. The shift in activity is reasonably straightforward. Logically shifting something right by three, the easiest thing to do is to put three zeros on the left and then copy down the remaining values until you've got the total amount of places there. So you're only gonna have an eight bit, in this case, you're gonna have an eight bit amount of uh, bit spaces. And so we end up with zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, one. Now the arithmetic shift right, we need to fill in the blanks with the leftmost value. That happens to be one in this case. So it's one, 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 zero, one, zero, one. 
Three and four left shifts, whether they're arithmetic or logic, work in exactly the same way. So we fill the gaps with zeros. So in this case, I'm going to put six zeros in and then take the rightmost values. And it gives us a bunch of zeros. In fact, the number zero is the answer. Uh, number four, arithmetic shift left. Again, we fill the, the spaces with zeros. So we get exactly the same answer for that. Five, explain what's happened in question four. So in question four, we've had an overflow error. We've lost the significant values. They've disappeared off the left-hand side. And it's because there just aren't enough bits to represent the value. Now the accuracy then has been lost completely. Question six, let's perform that right shift two. It's a logical right shift, so we're gonna fill the gaps with the zeros. And you can see there that we've only got a one zero at the end. So we've lost that uh, zero one that's on the end into an underflow error. So we haven't got enough bits to represent the bit pattern we need. And so in terms of accuracy, we've lost accuracy. We haven't got enough bits to store that.